Well, welcome to this session in our Opening Heaven's Door training course. And I'm joined by our, our staff and some of our volunteers. So we've got Denise and Lizzie and Greg and Sarah and me, John. And what we're talking about in this session is hearing God. But I'm aware that this phrase, hearing God, can be misleading because it's more about God communicating, because it's more than just the idea he speaks and we hear him through our ears, that might happen. So just to begin with, what are some of the ways that we, we sense God communicating with us? Sarah, let's start with you. I think the first way is through reading the Bible. Right. And whether it's that a particular phrase leaps out at you or just keeps on running through your mind through a day or whether it's that you are learning and just absorbing more of the truth of God's love for you or something like that. I think it's a major way of God communicating to us. Presumably a, a phrase could leap out of any Christian book we're reading or any other book yeah, we're reading. It could. Is there something specifically about the Bible though that grounds us in this idea of God communicating to us? I think that the fact of us reading the Bible and trying to absorb more, using it to understand more of God's heart for us really matters because if you've got that that you can weigh other things against, it makes a difference. I know I've had people who've, who've said, oh, that's what they think God is saying to them and yet it's been so contrary to what the Bible reveals about God yeah. that for me it, it's central that we've got we're hearing God about God's heart and God's love and his character through the Bible as something that other things can be weighed against. Sure, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other ways, we've sensed God communicating to us. There's been several times when actually I felt deeply emotional in a way that it's as if I'm catching something of God's heart for his people that isn't something I've I'm feeling for myself or, or me feeling for them but it, I, there's something within me that's resonating with his heart and well, it I'm, comes on you yeah it's one time I remember um, in the night and I, I couldn't sleep or whatever and I was just lying there praying and I felt this depth of sadness for people mm. a, a, a God's heart for them the compassion he feels for the situations they're in um, to the point where I was just streaming with tears, but they weren't tears for me. Yes. It was catching something of God's heart. Thank you. Yeah, I relate to that. When you're praying for somebody or just meeting somebody, I remember meeting somebody just on the street the other day, and my heart was sort of broken for just seeing how they were, mm. and mm. which was over and above what um, just an ordinary compassion and mm. how I found myself talking to him. and Mm. praying but I also find from nature I love going for walks and mm. I love you know listening to the birds listening to water looking at mountains and hills I just love nature and it just speaks to me somehow um, of God's love his majesty his kindness I don't know I just love being out there and is the difference between nature speaking to us of the say the grandeur of God and actually specifically hearing him sometimes I think there is I know when I was just standing by um, a lovely sort of cascade at one time and listening to the water and seeing it pour over and I just felt God saying that's my love for you mm -hmm. it just pours over you you know I just pour my love over mm. you and in you and that really did I just had a very special mm. sense of his presence okay well going back to what Sarah said about scripture it is very grounded in, in how you can hear God and I think for me it can be quite challenging to engage all the time in that but um, one of the other ways that I find helpful is through worship music mm. because a lot of the people who've written songs have obviously grounded their their um, the, the words that they've written in in scripture <clears throat> and it can actually point you to certain verses but you can also you know when you hear the chorus or, or you hear mm -hmm. that repetitive 
um, mm. you know, lyrics, it can be quite encouraging. And in the age we live in with multimedia and distractions, you might be busy, you know, doing something being quite practical here, you know, in the kitchen to preparing a meal. But if you've got those words pla is playing that, you know, are based on God's truths, then you can, you know, you can multitask in a way. And God might, you know, he might have a certain song or something will jump out of you in those verses that, that will encourage you. And you sense that he might be talking to you about mm -hmm. where you're at. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes, and, and I suppose the point is, if you are listening to and being grounded in the, the amazing truths of God, you know, given to us through worship, whether it's a specific word of God for us or not, mm. we are still being built up mm. by the truth of what is being communicated. Mm. Okay, now... Let's just sort of you know, deal with one thing that, that often comes up. And, and it's this, presumably we can get it wrong. I mean, I, I think that the history is probably laden with examples of people that thought they heard God ask them to do things, and they've done things, sometimes horrific things. And it actually wasn't God at all. Mm. Um, now, I don't know if either you might want to share times when you might have got it wrong or perhaps you could you know think about well then how do we know how do we know you know if, we, if it's God I mean in one sense you know what you were saying Lizzie that you can sit and look at a cascade and you feel God might be saying that's my love for you well you know if you were wrong it hasn't done you any harm or anyone else any harm, but it sounds just the sort of thing God would say. But on more specific things, like if we feel God is saying, I want you to do this, or go for that job or do that, and you get it wrong, it's actually a little more serious mm. because it's, you know, it, 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 mm. it could make some really bad decisions. How do we know? Have you, I mean, want to say when they've got it wrong or how do you know when, it, when, when, when it's God? I don't have a specific example of getting it wrong, but when you asked the question, I immediately thought of Samuel and how he was called by God. And it was a number of, you know, times that God called him. Yes. And I suppose I was reflecting on the fact that God is persistent in his desire to get our attention. And so it goes back to the theme that we have to always try and um, work at, well, especially myself, in terms of patience. So if you're listening to God and you want to hear his voice and hear what he has to say, you have to be patient because it might be in a number of ways that he communicates with you. Yes. So he might use someone that you just completely <coughs> don't expect. So a very, very relevant example for myself just from Sunday was I was speaking to my father and he, and he said to me, about because I've got a big meeting tomorrow, he said, take things in your stride. And it was a throwaway comment that, you know, he said to me, but I, it jumped out at me. And then during the church service that Sunday, on the Sunday morning, this last Sunday, I felt that God was saying there's more to that than just what he said. And so the communication that I think God was bringing about was in a number of ways. Yes. So it was through a, a, a family member who just really, it was a throwaway comment. I mean, that's just a well-known yeah. phrase. Mm. And then during the time of worship and what was going on in that meeting that we were, you know, encountering God, uh, I just sensed it was actually embellished and it was made more, um, it was affirmed mm. in the way that I must, you know, trust him. And mm. and so it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a causative mm. thing. It's not a one plus one mm. equals two. It's... It's a, it's a number of things that can have an effect. I don't know if that makes sense. But, mm -hmm. um, and that's also why it's so important to be in community with others because they can speak into your life, mm -hmm. your life and say things that God might have really said as well because he just works in mm -hmm. so many different ways. Joe? Okay, thank you. I think that's interesting about 
thinking about Samuel because it was three times mm. how th that he felt that Eli had spoken to him or called him mm. and I think that there are ways when we think God has spoken to us that we need to, to try it out is that really what you're saying God it seems really weird Lord I want to go your way but help me because this seems crazy and he talks about weighing things and discerning things mm. and I know that for me when I've been looking for jobs about God was saying one thing about something and my interpretation was that that phrase about location was about a particular place and actually it was still about location but it wasn't quite the way I'd thought it mm -hmm. and I think that God is kind to us too that he doesn't he doesn't always tell us or mostly tell us exactly what we've got to do when because then we're up the stakes are higher when we get it wrong. You raised something there. <coughs> that it's it's not just that God might communicate, mm. but we might need to interpret what God communicates. Yeah. And we might make the mistake not so much on actually hearing his communication, but on mm. the way we interpret it. Yeah. That's when we can really get it wrong sometimes. And I also think we can get it wrong on time scale. And we yes. can make the assumption that God That's has today. said something, that it's today or tomorrow. And it might be that he's speaking and saying this is something that will happen to give us that assurance. But that might not be for the next six months or a year. It might be for 10, 20, 30 years time. Yes. Okay. Yes. But I was, I was also going to pick up on that interpretation of how you know you might you might get a picture or you might receive a phrase or, or however you perceive that God's communicated with you. But that's I think when the discerning and actually sharing it with others can help because sometimes your own interpretation can be seen with your own personal blinkers on, mm -hmm. and so it can help to. Talk, talk and pray with some trusted people where you just think well what do you reckon this means and allow God to sift something or to clarify a, a phrase or a picture but it's not always easy mm. um, and, or, of how you mm. really understand what God's trying to say into a situation and I also think we need to have freedom just to think that doesn't make any sense I'm just going to let it go mm because we can spend an awful lot of time and energy trying to work out something that as a colleague, somebody else I used to work with used to say, hey, it was just the cornflakes I had for breakfast. Just God is bigger than making, than saying I'm gonna catch you out. And because you didn't particularly understand that, you've lost it. He can bring another phrase or something in and we can say, Lord, if that's you, would you show me? And it might be a different way, or it might be that somebody gives us a similar picture or, or something else that resonates. I mean, I remember someone, I may have shared it in this forum before, someone saying to me, do you have an issue with a particular relative or are you angry with them? And I said, no, not at all. And they were really gracious and they just said, OK, fine, I got it wrong. And they walked away. A few days later, I was walking into the lift at work going home and I suddenly felt all of this frustration and anger. And you thought, it was really kind of God, because he'd prepared me for that. Mm -hmm. But I hadn't thought, I hadn't recognised it, but God knew. Mm -hmm. so. But like you were saying, um, I was just thinking of uh, some of the parish pray and fast meetings we've had, where we've had a prayer meeting. And you go, you know, you maybe have spent the whole day trying to connect with God, and maybe you've been busy, and, but you've been trying. And you might be given a piece of scripture and you think, well, I'm not really sure how this is relevant and, re re you know, what, how it applies to the parish. But quite often, God's given somebody else a very similar or, or identical piece of scripture and you just think, all right, OK, there's something in this. Mm. So God, yeah. if you like, verifies when mm. something I think is important, doesn't mm. he? OK. Mm. I think what's interesting is that, that it can vary in different contexts. So within a church context... It may be much more about you putting things together corporately, mm -hmm. and for individuals, it may be it will be in a, in a different scale. Mm -hmm. We wandered a bit off. Anybody going to share a real time they got it completely wrong? 
got it completely wrong, but I re- I got the timing totally wrong. Okay. In terms of, um, I was working in Israel, and um, I felt it was time to leave, and I felt God saying it, you know, and I happened to be back in the UK, and somebody had mentioned uh, a conference centre and being administrator there, and I thought, oh, it's like quite, you know, and I just felt God sort of prompting me to go there, and I think I thought, well, this is, you know, this is all going to happen. And I went, and they were very nice, and I came back thinking, oh, good, I'll give him my notice. And then they wrote and said, sorry, we're not doing it. You know, we don't want anyone at the moment. So I thought, oh, that's funny. So I stayed another year. At the end of that year, I got a letter from them saying, we're now ready, and we'd like you to come. Right. But I got the year totally wrong. The timing, as you were saying. So why do you think God didn't tell you a year later? I may have just misheard or misunderstood. Right. Okay. Um, I remember a situation where I was desperate to hear God and was in a church where we were growing in the prophetic or trying to, and I remember knocking something over um, just on the floor and thinking, okay, well, how is God speaking to us through this? And it's like, and my friend said, oh, come on. And it was just this, well, God's got to speak through everything. And so I was almost going to, well, I, what, what, what are you saying? That was a complete load of rubbish. But sort of, yes, like, yeah. sure. uh, and well, I think sometimes we yeah. make the assumption yeah. that God has to be, everything has to have everything a meaning. Has to have a meaning. Mm. And um, so we just kick it over. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I've knocked sure. it up over and there's no, a teabag in it. But yeah. you know, it's sort of how we think we're responding to God in the right way so you're talking about jobs reminded me of God prompting me to apply for a mission job at this Christian healing mission and it was the chaplaincy role and I applied for it really quite confident that that's what God wanted me to do and it was only during the interview we all agreed no I wasn't the right person for that role and I I remember sort of having a right old grump at God afterwards saying well what was the point of that you wanted me to apply I did it what what Mm-hmm. Why? And literally, the next morning, I discovered John had written me an email saying, thought we'd offer you this job. <laughs> and mm. here I am. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's sort yeah. of how you interpret things. Yeah. Yes. And you don't always get it right, but if you try and do what you think God is asking you to do, I think he honours that and, mm. and brings something good you out of it. take a risk, don't you? Because you don't always know, but it's only in taking the risk you find out. Okay. I want to move on a bit to talking more about ministry, in a sense. Is there a difference between us trying to hear God for ourselves, which we've been talking about, and in ministry what we're more doing is trying to catch what God might be saying to somebody else through us? Is there a difference? I I think the stakes are a bit higher, because if you get it wrong, it it can be more serious. Mm -hmm. You can really hurt somebody. Any thoughts about that? I think one of the, what, one of the lovely things about encounter prayer ministry is that it, we want the other person mm. to hear most of all, mm. yes. and it's it's them hearing so that they know they can hear. Yes. And then if we have something, we might share it, and it can help or not. But the most important is what they what they've heard. Mm. Yes. Um, it's how you so offer it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, but but it, right. is, it makes yeah. a big difference because the the onus is off you as a prime minister to get it right. I've got it wrong lots of times, yes. and it's not helpful. No. And I think too, um, when you're praying for it, it's how you offer it. You know that yeah. if you do have a picture, you don't say, "Well, God is saying this," but it's actually, "Does this make any sense to you?" or something. Then it's how you offer. And for me personally. This is just me personally. I find it sometimes easier to hear for somebody else than I do for me. I find it hard. If God Mm -hmm. says something to me, I find it harder to believe Mm. that what he's saying, you know, that I love you. Do you really? You know, I find find that sometimes harder to believe what he's saying about me to me than if you prayed for me and gave me a word that I might believe it more. Mm. It's something, I don't know, but I find that. Yeah. I was also thinking in some ways as well, it's a bit more immediate. Um, when you're praying for yourself, you're sort of waiting on God, you're mm. reading the scripture, you're, you're pondering and spending time. 
Whereas in prayer ministry, that person's there and then, and you haven't got the luxury mm. of, you know, waiting until God might deem to say something. He needs to speak into that moment if he, if that's what he wants to do. Mm. There's an, so there's an immediacy. Mm. Mm. Um, that's true. But we can catch that immediacy on our own, can't we? Mm. Sometimes. Do you need to have the idea, oh, this is going to do more of Sometimes, God, so well. but... Um, so there might be occasions where you're <laughs> saying, Lord, Lord, lead me to my car keys, you know, <laughs> and you need them there and then. But other times you're, you've chosen to set aside time to be with God. So it's a little mm-hmm. bit more luxurious, mm-hmm. if you like. So that's what I meant. Uh, well, one thing you were saying, Lizzie, is that it, it's not just what we hear, it's how we deliver it. And, and mm-hmm. I, um, I very much warm to the idea that what we don't have to say is, God says this to you. Because, you know, when, when folks say that to me, which they often have, the pressure you know, to believe, well, this, they think this is God. Mm-hmm. I think it's a lot of rubbish, but they think it's God. It, it, it's quite something, isn't it, mm-hmm. to have that pressure of being, being told this is God. Um, I, I like the idea of, you know, it has, does this mean anything? My yeah. Lord. Yeah. But if it is God, yeah. it'll hit with a, it'll a hit. power. Yeah, because exactly. Whether you say it's God or not. We're yes. just offering what we sense God is saying, but we get it wrong. Yes. Mm. And there can be, as you say, sometimes the interpretation of things. Yes. I think the interpretation is one of the big places where we can get it wrong, where we may get a picture for somebody or, or an idea or a thought, and we put our own interpretation as to what God is saying through that, rather than saying, does this make any sense to you? And leaving the person to think, okay, how does this fit? Because I've been in in ministry and someone has offered a picture and said what they think it's about and I'm thinking, I think it's about something completely and totally different. And if two of us in the same room are getting very different interpretations of something or ideas, we need to take great care with that. Mm -hmm. It's interpretation, I think, that can often do the damage. And somebody said, you know, they had a picture of a, a red tractor I thought, well, what is the heck about this to do with a rake tractor? But fortunately, they didn't say anything else. And this really spoke to the man mm. because he had a child and he had a special rake tractor. Mm. Mm. But they were tempted to sort of try and sort of say what they thought. But fortunately, mm. they didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes God, in ministry, God speaks to us as prayer ministers to inform our prayers rather than to pass it on to the person we're praying for. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that yes. takes sensitivity and wisdom as to mm. when yeah. when to just use it internally, mm. yeah. as yeah, opposed to speaking yeah, externally. Yeah, everything yeah. we get does not have to be shared, no. or is not to be shared. Mm. Mm. I'll just go back to being practical. What one or one and a half things would you say to people a practical pointer to how we can hear God better. Who does that, Sarah? Expect that God wants to communicate with you. Thank you. But know that it might not be the way you expect. Thank you. Because I think my answer would be, um, you know, look out for the unexpected. Mm. Don't assume that you know what it is. Yeah. I was going to say, if you have a hobby or a pastime or something you enjoy doing, and it's an opportunity to just be on your own for a short time, be expecting that God would speak to you in that Mm. opportunity. So, you know, for me, you know, I do a lot of exercise, and I think, you know, if you're out doing a run or you're going out on a swim or something, just be expectant that God will talk to you in that moment. Um. I mean, obviously it can't be a passage of scripture, but it's just that connection. And it might be facilitated by doing something that you can semi-switch off, you know, Mm. your brain, and, you know, you can receive. Thank you. Lizzie? Um, I think one of the things, because I do spiritual direction, you know, to sort of try and help how to people and for myself to engage and one thing sometimes is to stick with a picture a painting a, a physical picture a yeah. physical painting and see you know is God saying something to you within that and it's been often very 
helpful. Mm. You know, that there's a, sort of like an icon or... A, um, and I remember doing there are these cards, you know, the script, the Gospels. Um, you, they they have the um, the pack of cards. Oh, Jesus deck. Je- Jesus yeah. deck. Yeah. Do you remember we did that? Yeah. And that really spoke to people. Yes. You know, they mm-hmm. just were able to engage in some way. And sometimes that helps people where they find, and I find that sometimes. Yeah. I find I have a visual mind. Um, yes. I love doing what you do too and scripture you know but I love um, just sometimes that sort of helps or even having a candle I yeah. just feel so if you're made visually go I with that made, yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you mm. please I was thinking um, finding a friend to grow in confidence with you know where you're just sitting together in prayer and saying okay God will you speak to me for that person and finding mm. opportunities mm. to just growing confidence in that. Mm. Wonderful. And I think too, remember that we all had to learn how to talk. Mm. And mm. we've got more vocabulary now than we had when we were kids. Mm. And just to know that this will grow because we're his kids. Mm. But we won't, it, it changes and it develops. Yeah. And also, like, listen, you know, when you're on the telephone, you could ring me up and I think, well, who's that? But the more mm. you mm. talk to me, oh, hello, Sarah. Yes. <laughs> that you recognise yeah. that voice, you begin to recognise, mm. yes, that is the law, because yes. that's what it was like. Yeah. So the the practising. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm sorry about the passing trains that have interrupted us, but thank you very much for your uh, input and your wisdom. And uh, bless you all, and I hope that comes out as helpful. Thank you.